can we actually test some of those cornerstone assumptions behind the validity of all of these methods? Yes, we can, but not in the frequentist world. So to test sparsity of the underlying process, we're going to have to become Bayesian for a second. Okay? Now, this is probably going to be also a good time once again to just, you know, uh, bring home this idea that the location of sparsity matters. One example that I always kind of have in mind and given I think it illustrates it quite nicely is the case of the sparsity in the covariance versus precision matrices. I mean, obviously, the two objects are very much related to each other because one is just the inverse of the other. But nevertheless, one is going to be sparse, as in having a lot of zero, while the other is obviously going to be dense. And ex ante, in most cases, you don't know, I mean, which one is going to be roughly sparse, which one is going to be a good kind of assumption to start with. But if you choose the wrong starting point, you're going to end up with the inverse of the matrix that's going to be completely off the mark. Okay? So sometimes sparsity in even very related objects are going to be driving results in a fundamentally different way. 